Good morning, everybody. My name is Dermot Healy, and I am the Head of Technical Asset Management at SNBC Aviation Capital. I am here to you today in my capacity as lead on Aircraft Leasing Ireland's digitalization program. So I hope to share with you some perspectives from the lessor on digitalization in the aviation space. First, a little bit of background on Aircraft Leasing Ireland. So ALI is a trade association that represents Ireland's aircraft lessors. We have over 31 members and that is growing. And we represent the majority of global lessors, all of whom have a presence in Ireland. We were established in 2018, essentially to give the industry a voice on policy issues and also in the media. What we had found was that individual lessors were making representations, uh, for example, at European Commission level, um, but there was no coherent approach. So by coming together under ALI, we've got a single voice on these policy issues. Our objective is to maintain and develop Ireland's position as a leading global centre for aircraft leasing. And we generally include all external stakeholders as we formulate policy. So to the topic of the day, uh, digitalization. So the objectives that we would have on digitalization are to facilitate the transition of aircraft between lessees and operators. That's primary focus. Um, but also to enable the smoother trading of aircraft. Lessors will frequently trade aircraft between each other and with other investors, and that attracts more capital into the space. Aviation is a very capital intensive industry, and it's important that we get new forms of capital in, and having an ability to trade an aircraft easily and smoothly from one investor to another assists in that objective. We need to reduce the cost and complexity in the industry. It's been estimated that about $450 million is spent every year reviewing the records on transitioning aircraft between lessees. We would like to enhance the veracity and the reliability of maintenance records and adopt essentially a more sustainable approach. That ultimately means eliminating the paper-based systems that we've all become used to. We need to move away from manual, entry, manual data entry and the errors that this brings into our records. So where are we today? Well, it's, there's no globally accepted standards for aircraft records. Airlines and MRO ERP systems don't communicate with each other. So for example, if you have an aircraft in tracks, um, you can't take that information and move it into an AMOS environment without manual intervention. We see many entities seeking an opportunity in the digital aviation space. The OEMs, for example, have massive investments in digitization and digital solutions for aircraft. There's a lack of industry consensus on how we should all move forward. And that increases the cost and complexity. Um, so some lessors um, do obtain utilization data automatically. Um, every lease would require an operator to report either monthly or quarterly on the utilization they have on the aircraft. And that leads into a billing function and also facilitates the lessor to establish the maintenance consumption on the aircraft as it's operated by the lessee. Now, a lot of this information is publicly available through systems like the Arian satellite data or Flight Radar 24. So what some lessors have been doing is obtaining that information um, and automatically downloading it into their systems and comparing that with the information from the airline um, to see if it's possible to automate that and alleviate some of this burden on the airlines. Most lessors are using digital repositories for their aircraft maintenance records. That's essentially um, a digital repository of scanned documents. Uh, so paper converted into a digital form and stored in a system that you can then give access to the next lessee or to an investor who's interested in purchasing the asset. We have seen a lot of concerns around data ownership. Um, this is probably most evident in some of the OEM systems where the newer aircraft, um, for example, your A350 or 787, have the facility to automatically upload um, information like aircraft health monitoring into the OEM system. The OEM can then package that information um, and work with the operators to improve maintenance reliability, etc. But the issue arises as to who actually owns that data. 
some operators um, do not want this information going automatically into the OEMs. Um, the lessors feel that they should have access to that information, particularly in the case where an airline might end up in default and the aircraft has to be repossessed. Um, and the OEMs obviously control the data because it's residing in their systems. So until those issues are resolved, um, we feel that things will move forward only at a very slow pace. We also see certain participants um, still seeking West signatures on key documents, be it in the ASA Form 1, A130-3. Um, depending on where you go, some people will want to see the original Dirty Fingerprint hard copy with a, a West signature on it. So we would need to uh, address COVID-19 and the impact it's had on the industry uh, over the last 20 months. So we've actually found that less air, lessors, airlines and regulators are in fact more accepting of digital records as a result of the pandemic. We have successfully transitioned quite a number of aircraft between different jurisdictions without an NAA physical inspection. Um, we're finding the CAMO recommendations are proving very effective. Um, the NAAs can rely on that and they will have eyes on the aircraft and on the records. Um, you therefore have a digital review of those maintenance records and re-registration of the asset. Now, resistance to this does persist in certain jurisdictions and with certain NAAs, and that is problematic. And the FAA system has proved particularly challenging over the, the period of the pandemic um, because they do have a requirement for a DAR to do a physical inspection on the aircraft before they issue um, the C of A. And that's become a major impediment. We have found that we've had to um, fly pilots in on corporate jets into a jurisdiction to fly an asset out to a location where a DAR can physically review it uh, and get the aircraft moved onto the NRAGE or get its awareness certs issued. And that's led to significant cost for the lessor community um, over the last 20 months. But overall, um, it's fair to say we have seen an acceleration in the use of digital solutions uh, and online review of records over the period of the pandemic. Uh, and that's certainly a positive. So the next steps as we would see them, um, we're pushing SPEC 2500 as a standard for records globally. Um, we believe a lot of work has been put into it. It is a top level system, we accept that. It may not have all the detail some airlines would require, but in terms of presentation of records from one lessee to the next, we feel that this standard can be adopted. The ERP providers, um, there's quite a number of them out there. We would like to see them sharing digital data between them. Now they are competitors, we recognize that. Um, and we've been working with uh, a particular entity who as proof of concept that it is possible to take information out of, say, for example, an AMOS system and transmit it into a track system, provided that information is, provi is presented in SPEC 2500 format. We need to agree global minimum standards for digital signatures. I think that much is clear. Um, ICAO have been supportive of this for many years now. Um, and we see the major regulators, EASA and FAA, and need to agree these standards and then push for global acceptance. Online digital application for change of registry is also something that we have seen in certain areas and we'd like to see that used wider. All the necessary documents such as an ARC, a C of A, deregistration are all provided digitally and you get your re-registration through that process. It's very smooth, very efficient and eliminates a lot of cost for the industry. We would wish to eliminate the NAA physical presence over time for re-registration and essentially have a remote view of that data. Also, we feel the operators uh, can facilitate the acceptance of an aircraft into their system um, and also at the far end in the re-delivery of that aircraft with a full set of digital records. Uh, no need for paper sets to be produced. So looking forward to the future then, um, we believe that ultimately aircraft will have a digital twin. Um, the day of delivery, you will get all your digital delivery documents. Um, I'm not talking about digital representation of paper. It'll actually be in digital form. 
all the maintenance activity on that aircraft will be signed off digitally throughout its life. Uh, essentially, there'll be no paper associated with it. You can have a digital maintenance registry that's accessible by all stakeholders, be they a follow-on lessee or an investor interested in purchasing the asset. It's secure online and provides a cradle-to-grave unbroken history of the records on the asset. The data required by industry participants should be passed digitally in a secure manner. Blockchain is being proposed as one of the solutions on this, um, but there may be others that will work as well. We think there's an opportunity for airline systems to automatically update the lessor systems and, and eliminate some of the manual intervention that is required to provide things like utilization, um, maintenance event updates, etc. And it is key that as an industry we avoid any regression here. We've, we've had an acceleration through COVID on the digital project and we need to build on those advances made to date. So that's all I have for you today. Um, I'm available for um, questions in the Q&A session later on. And I'd like to thank you very much for your attention.